New videos every day. Decide who you are going to become. Right. Decide where you are going versus what's been spoken over you. Mm -hmm. Because that's all it takes is one thought, one positive thought to carry you towards success. Life, wisdom. Thank you so much for tuning in to The Truth Talks. I'm your host, Karina Rachel. I'm joined today by Tyrone Obaseki, and our topic is life after foster care. Tyrone, thank you so much for joining me today. It's great to be here today. So while you were in the foster care system as a child, you received several different mental health diagnoses. Absolutely. And now... Despite all of those diagnoses, you have received um, your bachelor's, you've received a master's, you are a successful person. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you went from a situation where you'd received multiple mental health diagnoses to clearly being a successful business person? Yeah, yeah. It's all about not entertaining the lie. And previously I talked about never losing sight of your goals. Mm -hmm. That's what drove me to success. It's not about entertaining the, 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 the thought of being schizophrenic. Because if I entertained that thought, perhaps I would have become what was spoken over me for years. Mm -hmm. But because I had faith and also the right people to speak things that be not as though they were, that's how I was able to overcome those labels. Mm -hmm. It's just something about young people in foster care. They kind of become what's been spoken over them because they don't know any better. Right. And so today you see a product of my faith in God and not entertaining the lies that were spoken over me from day one. Right. Because you were very young when you started receiving these mental health diagnoses and started right. being given these medications. Right. Is that right? Yes, yes. And that's all because there were a lot of people who were solely after residual income, solely after making money versus actually dealing with the issues. Mm -hmm. And so I actually tell young people all the time, I'm a clinician, they come in my office a lot, and I tell them, you have the freedom to choose where are you going from here? The slate has been wiped clean. You have a choice as to whether or not you're going to entertain what has been spoken over you mm -hmm. or whether or not you're going to pursue those goals. A lot of times, our young people have low self-esteem mm -hmm. and they run right into the trap mm -hmm. of society. Mm -hmm. And that's the belief that everybody has a mental illness, that everybody has a pill that, that they can take. And that's not true. So in a previous video, you know, we kind of discussed that there's rampant use of these psychiatric medications in the foster exactly. care system, primarily to, you could say, handle unwanted behavior. Right, right. Um, you talked about that they told you you were, you were too hyperactive, right. as if there are any six-year-olds out there who you couldn't call hyperactive. But in the foster care system, there's people there ready to turn that into you know, income for themselves right, right. and just give you medications instead of actually saying, well, how could I help this kid? How could right. I help him with, you know, with whatever these issues are? And, you know, and I think that's because group homes and child placing agencies, they received higher funding for children who had a high level of care. Mm -hmm. And so what incentive was there to help young people deal with their issues the greater the behavior, the less money. Wow. And so that's why you have a lot of young people with numerous labels because of the income. Mm -hmm. and, so for every, so, and so for every young person, I always tell them, decide who you are going to become. Right. Decide where you are going versus what's been spoken over you. Mm -hmm. Because that's all it takes is one thought one positive thought to carry you towards success. That's awesome. And clearly 
your work as a motivational speaker, we can understand that as, as you're talking here now, it's incredibly motivating. And I think that really putting it in the context of, you know, you had a childhood that was really traumatic. It was very you peripatetic were, and convoluted. Yeah. Um, abandoned at a very young age and then put into this system where it's supposed to be caring for you, but all you're met with is abuse, Labels, restraints, restraints. Yeah. And then these mental health diagnoses that, mm -hmm. you know, you talked a little in the previous video about, you know, had you, um, you know, when you got out of the foster care system, had you held on to these diagnoses, I mean, you would be in a very different place today. I think it was bipolar, schizophrenia. Right, right, there were right. all of these different disorders that they had tried to tell you that you had. And basically what you're saying is that we can refute that diagnosis. We can refute those diagnoses. Every person has the internal capacity to move forward. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to tell our, our young people that you have the freedom to choose. Now, for our foster parents and mentors, they have to understand that they have to speak things into the atmosphere. They have to speak things that are positive to our young people. Mm -hmm. I had a foster parent and her name was Daphne Johnson. Initially, she believed I was mentally retarded. But then as things began to change, as she began to look at my grades in school, she said, hold up. There's nothing wrong with this boy. And so she began to speak things into my life, such as, son, you are going to graduate college. Son, you may be hyperactive, but let's come play football. Mm -hmm. Go play soccer. So she tried to find different ways to utilize my energy. And that's what we need. We need right. more people to to challenge and see the greatness in our young people mm -hmm. versus contributing to their demise. Right. Mm -hmm. And you talked, you know, we talked a little bit about how, um, you know, this idea of refuting the diagnosis that, you know, well, how could someone ever prove that they didn't have schizophrenia or that they weren't bipolar? And really, I would say that the burden of proof is not on any person to prove that they don't have any of these disorders, but the burden of proof would lie on the psychiatric industry exactly. to be able to prove that there's any biological component of these disorders or that there's any way to prove that anyone and has any one of these. There's no fact sheet that they can give to say this is what you do when you're bipolar. And also, if I can postulate, there is a thin line between sanity and insanity. Certain events that occur in life, mm -hmm. things can happen that can push you towards that edge. But if you have people that is empowering you, aiding you to deal with those issues, you won't break through that mold and cross over into insanity. Mm -hmm. So I think we also have to ask ourselves, how can we change the environment to make sure young people aren't crossing over into insanity? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that you bring up a really important point, which is that just the isolation alone of feeling neglected, feeling that you don't have anyone to turn to or that you don't have anyone who's giving you compassion and giving you encouragement, that alone can induce mental push illness. You, yeah, will push yeah. you past that yeah. point and it can be so easily prevented simply yeah. by having that yeah. supportive person or that motivational person, which is what you do and I find right. that so empowering. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, thanks a lot, Karina, but we also have to look at the fact that a lot of young people display what's called a iatrogenic illness. Example, you are retarded. Johnny starts acting retarded because the caregiver and the therapist said he was, he was retarded. So the power of words really, really shape our young people. And that's what we have to remain cognizant of. What are we speaking over our young people? Right. If we treat them like mentally ill patients, they will act like mentally ill patients until somebody somewhere operates with the vision to speak life mm -hmm. into their situation. Mm -hmm. So are there any resources or something that you could give for children who maybe don't have people in their lives 
in these supportive roles, helping them out yeah. that yeah. maybe they're feeling alone. They're feeling isolated. They're feeling that there's nowhere to turn. Where could you direct them that maybe they could find that supportive, motivating uh, person right. to help them? Well, I actually work with an organization called Angel Reach, which is a transitional home for aged out foster youth. We also have a component where young people all across America can write to us and we will partner them up with somebody that can help them deal with their issues. Sometimes it's as simple as getting the word out and just letting people know what's going on and how you feel. I have dedicated my life to changing the life of young people, mm -hmm. helping them accomplish their, their overall goals. Mm -hmm. So. They have to get the word out. Also, I actually encourage all young people to write to their congresspeople, write to the legislators, write to the pastors. Find somebody that you can connect with that can help you deal with your issues. Right. Mm -hmm. So to know that they're not alone. You're not alone. That this traumatic and oftentimes abusive environment mm -hmm. that the government may have been supplying to you, you know, these children who are in the foster care system to know that they can reach out right, and that right. this is not what real life is right. like, that they're in a system that is abusive, that right. is traumatic, and that they can reach out to find right. support outside of the system. And in reaching out, it triggers something in them to help them recognize even more that they are bold, that they have the capacity to overcome all obstacles. Mm -hmm. I actually tell all young people to operate with the mentality of a champion. It doesn't matter what's before you. If you say that you are a champion, you will overcome it. Mm -hmm. Despite being labeled bipolar, right. you can make it. Despite being treated as if you were a vagrant, you can overcome it. Mm -hmm. Despite being labeled over-medicated, Despite being labeled emotionally disturbed, you can make it. Right. And I love, you know, something I think that you said in the last video was that it just takes one positive thought or one hopeful thought mm -hmm. that can tip the balance it really can. the other way and mm -hmm. kind of put you on that path towards, towards your self-actualization right. and becoming right. the successful person that you really want to become. That's so true. And even when you find yourself at a low point in life, for instance, when I aged out of foster care, I was homeless and on the streets, catching buses, going to Kroger's, trying to go to work, and I didn't have anybody there. Mm -hmm. But I knew that I wanted to graduate college. That one thought carried me through homelessness. Wow. That one thought carried me through dealing with biological relatives who did not want to deal with me. So I encourage all young people to keep going. Don't let labels, don't let what people have spoken over you prevent you from accomplishing your goals. Right. Well, Tyrone, thank you so very much. And we, of course, will include the link to the Angel Reach website so that people can get a hold of you. Outstanding. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so today. much, Kirkarina. Thank you for watching. I hope this video leaves you feeling hopeful and feeling motivated. I hope you will subscribe to our channel so you can see all of our future interviews. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time.